In this third fly tying tutorial for beginners, I'm going to talk to you primarily around fly tying thread. I'm going to talk to you about the size that you're going to find in the threads. I'm going to talk to you about the materials that you would expect the threads to be made out of, because that does have a little bit of an impact as to what thread you want to use when you come to tie a pattern. I will also then just quickly go through and introduce you to other spooled items such as uh, wires, flosses, tensiles, and pretty much the stuff that you see on a spool in front of me. Now the first measuring system I want to talk about is the old school aught system. And essentially it was a baseline of zeros. It was a, a system that came around I think in the uh, in the industry when uh, they used to you, you do a lot of silk. Uh, and because silk was never a uniform product, it was always a, it was a close enough kind of baseline for them to work off. So when you hear the aught system, just think zeros and it's a baseline of zeros. Now to help kind of understand how that works, I've always just looked at the number and the bigger the number, the smaller or finer the thread's going to be. And the way I remembered that was simply kind of pick up a spool and pretend that that is a decimal value. So if there's eight zeros, you're essentially going to go point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros, and that will be a bigger number than 12 zeros. So if you went point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, you know, mathematically, numerically, that number is going to be a finer number. So in terms, I'd always remember the thread to be a finer thread. Whether or not that was the intended uh, the, the intended way of them doing it, I have no idea, be it right or wrong. It's the way I remembered it, and I found it very, very useful. So if I look at an alt, I'll just simply remember the more I'll see, I'll think of that kind of point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros. Point eight, you know, eight zeros will then be a bigger number than 12 zeros. That is a nice, simple way of remembering it, and that's how I've always done it. Now, talking about the next measurement you're going to come across is the D, or denier. Now, with denier, that is actually a physical weight of uh, material per 9,000 meters. So it is a physical measured weight, and the higher the number, obviously, mathematically, the higher the number, the greater the weight, essentially, the thicker the thread will be. So... There's two different ways of thinking about that. The amount of zeros, the smaller zeros, uh, the more zeros they are, the smaller the thread, the higher the denier number, the bigger the thread or the heavier the thread will be. So in turn, you would expect that to be a thicker thread. This is where it gets confusing. So when you go from one brand to another, that's where it gets a little bit tricky. If we were to look at Danville's 70 denier, so if we look at that there, 70 denier, 70 denier, they are physically the same weight per 9,000 meters. So you would expect those threads to be the same. Make sense? This is where it gets confusing. That is a six alt thread, and that is a 12 alt thread. So that has a lot more zeros in the alt system. That's where it gets confusing, and it really does catch a lot of fly tires out, certainly when you start. So you do need to remember that the alt system is a good guideline, strictly speaking, not necessarily always accurate because it does change from manufacturer. So when you hear me say, I'm tying up a fly with a 70 denier thread, you pretty much know that a 70 denier is an actual physical weight per 9,000 meters. But if you hear me say I'm tying with a 12 volt thread, but I don't really specify which manufacturer it is, um, it, it could vary quite a lot. So just kind of bear that in mind. And this is kind of where some brands have actually dropped the or system altogether. So there you've got 70 denier, which is a UTC ultra thread. In 70 denier, there is no all system on it. They've not even gone into the all system with this. They just simply use a 70 denier. So when you compare these all side by side, you would expect those threads to be pretty much the same diameter. And yeah, th that's a good baseline to work off. So I'd always look for a 70 denier as my baseline in that manufacturer. And again, if you look at uni thread, that there is a 72 denier. So it's very, very close to your 70 denier. And it is an 8 odd thread. So that will tell you that that is a... Uh, very, very similar thread size to that. So all of those there are the thread size, even though it goes from 6 alt to 8 alt to 12 alt. A little bit tricky, a little bit confusing at that point. But hopefully that will help you get your head around the sizing system. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is the materials they use to actually make the thread, because that does have quite a big impact on how the thread behaves. Now, from a fly tire, certainly from a trout perspective, I would normally rarely concern myself with three different materials. And that will be nylon, polyester, and gel spun polyethylene, if I remember that correctly, or GSP. I'll just often call it GSP. So 
those three materials are very different. They behave differently and they lend themselves to do different things better. What I mean by that is, first off, if we were to look at these two particular brands, which are both nylon, they behave very similarly to, uh, to each other. And what they basically are is a nice flat lying thread. Uh, kind of has this nice like translucent look to it nice really flat you no know, nice kind of sheen and glossy look to it uh, and it's got quite a bit of stretch too so nice stretchy thread really does lend itself very well to certain applications especially when you want a flat body or minimal build up or, or a nice kind of uh smooth finish to an underbody uh, really really good thread for uh, for that type of purpose then when you look at a slightly different thread for example the Semperfy. Uh, so you simplify classic waxed your uh, uni thread for example these threads are made out of uh, polyester now polyester is a little bit different and it is typically kind of a rounded more corded like thread so you can see there it's a little bit more rounded and corded still has a little bit of stretch to it so it, it lends itself really well to uh, kind of certain applications where you might want a bit more head build up uh, you might want a little bit more body build up uh, or you might find that that kind of adheres to, uh, you, you might get dubbing to adhere to it a little bit better. So it might have a little bit kind of better adhesive properties to it. So th there's a difference between the two, even though they are very, very similar threads, there are some differences. Now the next material you're gonna come across is GSP. GSP is uh, really, really strong. It you know, really is a strong thread. So it allows the manufacturer to go into really, really fine, um, you know, fine threads. So that's a 20D or a 24 alt. It's a really fine thread, but it's really, really strong. So tying microflies and all the really small stuff, that is absolutely excellent for because it's a very fine thread, really, really strong. And you can see that it, it really just doesn't want to break. Uh, but it's got some downsides too. So it's quite slippery. It's an unwaxed. It's a little bit slippery. Um, so you would need to use wax to help it adhere to your hook. Uh, not great for underbodies if you're tying things like uh, a big muddler where you want to spin the head, which I'll show you at a later time, uh, a later tutorial. So it doesn't necessarily do the same stuff as the other threads, but it has some really, really good properties too. So not as a, not a stretchy. In fact, there's very little stretch to it, a little bit more slippery, but it can go really flat and really fine. And it really does have its place on a fly ties rack. So those are the three materials you're going to come across. Uh, hopefully you found that a little bit informative and you'll be able to take that on board.